What is going on everyone? This video is a step-by-step -step guide on how to trigger a step function when a message comes in or SQSQ using a lambda function as a trigger. In this tutorial, I will be configuring a lambda function in Python. This integration pattern is used when you need to trigger a step function to orchestrate some workflow when a message enters a queue from the SQS service. So in this video, I'm going to cover how to connect our SQS queue to our Lambda function as a trigger to receive our message, walk through the code required to read our message from our SQS queue, start a state machine with the payload pass from SQS, and then finally, how to delete our message from our queue when we have successfully triggered our step function. Now this tutorial will be fairly code heavy in Python, and if you're interested in looking at this code I've used for this tutorial, see the link to my GitHub repo in the description below. All right, so I'm in my step function service in the console, and as you can see, I've already created a very simple step function which invokes a Lambda function that simply returns a message saying, hello world. Now switching over to the SQS service, you can see I have a queue called workflow test queue, which I wanna configure so that every time a message comes into this queue, it will automatically trigger my step function once for every message that comes through. So to get us started, we're gonna to navigate to the Lambda service, where I've already went ahead to create a new Lambda in Python 3.9. So the first step is to make sure that our SQS queue is connected to the Lambda function so that it can trigger our state machine. So we're gonna to go to add trigger and from add trigger, we're going to select SQS. Now we're gonna select that SQS that I showed you earlier, which is called workflow test queue. Now, because I only want one message to trigger one state machine, I'm gonna make sure that the batch size is gonna be set to one. I'm gonna set the batch window to be one second as well, because we're not waiting for other records to come through. So once we get one record, we immediately want to trigger our state machine. Now it's important that you make sure your Lambda role has permissions to read and delete from this queue in order for this to work. So there's a role called AWS Lambda SQS queue execution role. You can copy this AWS manage role into a new role and add the get queue URL permission and lock it down to the specific resource you need. This policy will allow us to retrieve messages from the queue, get the queue URL and delete the message when we are done. I wanna stress it's important that we can successfully delete a message from the queue after we're done with it so we don't end up triggering this our step function over and over again incurring additional AWS fees. Another set of permissions you need to have is your Lambda role needs the ability to execute your state machines so you need to have the start execution for your particular resource defined. So great I'm going to go ahead and add the trigger and you should now see that it's been successfully configured with this green box appearing here. All right, next we can go ahead and write our code we're gonna to need to actually read from this queue and start our state machine. So I'm gonna walk through the functions that I've developed within this Lambda function to make this happen. So first, we're going to need a couple libraries to get us started. We're gonna need the JSON library to convert a Python dictionary to a string to send to our state machine later. We're gonna need Boto3 to interact with the queue service as well as the state machine service. I generally always import logging to add logs to my Lambda function and importing the OS to use environment variables to call out our state machine name and account number. All right, so let, to get us started here, let's just enable our logger. So I'm just going to set my logger to be info level to get any messages that are gonna be coming through through CloudWatch logs. And next, I'm just going to add some environment variables. So we're gonna use these environment variables later to call our state machine. And we're gonna pass our account number, state machine, and the region that we're in. All right, so the first step is we need to convert our SQSQ message into a JSON payload in order to start our state machine. I've went ahead to create a very simple function that all it is using is json.dumps to take our SQSQ message to pass it to our state machine. Now, you don't need to do this if you're not concerned or need to pass your message from your SQSQ to your state machine. All right, so the second function we need is going to be a function that starts our state machine. So I've called it start state machine. It takes two parameters. One is gonna be the state machine ARN, and the second is the SQSQ message, which is coming from our dict to JSON method here. And all it's gonna be doing is we're gonna be initiating from Bodo3, the step function API. And then we're gonna be using client.start underscore execution. It needs the state machine ARN and any inputs we wanna pass. So here I'm passing the SQSQ message. And then some logging just to say that the state machine has successfully started. 
Great, now I know you're thinking, okay, we started our state machine, we should be done, why can't we just stop there? Well, the next two functions that we need to bring are dealing with deleting a message from the SQSQ. I find this is probably one more of the difficult part of this Lambda function. So first step we need to do is retrieve the queue name and queue owner AWS ID from the SQS message. And we need to be able to convert that to a queue URL so then we can delete the SQSQ message. And the input is this event source ARN. So just to quickly walk through what this is doing here, we're gonna be using the SQSQ API. From our SQSQ message, it's going to be doing some parsing here where we're basically getting the queue name and the queue owner ID from our event payload. And then next, we need to actually get the queue URL in order to interact with it later. So here we're passing in the queue name and queue ID, which are parameters for this function. And now from that, we're actually getting back the queue URL, which we're later gonna to use to delete the message from this queue. All right, and our final function we're gonna need is gonna be called delete SQS message. So now we're gonna be passing in our queue that we've got from our SQS source ARN to queue URL function. And then also passing in a receipt handle, which comes from our SQS queue message. And what this function is doing is simply just deleting a message from our SQS queue. So as you can see here, we're using the client from Bodo3 for SQS. And then we're using the client.delete message. And now we're passing in that queue URL as well as our receipt handle from our SQS queue message. And then if that fails, we're passing a response just saying, hey, our message has failed to delete. And if it doesn't, we're gonna get a message saying, message deleted successfully from the queue. All right, so to bring all our functions together, we're gonna to have our Lambda handler. So to walk through what this main part of the Lambda is doing, which is calling all of our functions here. So we're gonna be reading from our SQS queue, which is coming through this event variable. And because there's only one record, we're gonna pass in zero, which is gonna give us the first and only entry in our payload. And I told you earlier, we needed this receipt handle and it's simply just coming from our SQS queue, which is this variable called receipt handle. Our event source ARN is simply from the value from this key event source ARN. So now that we've called all the variables we need from our SQS queue event, we're gonna start executing our functions here. So on line 78, we're gonna be converting our Python dictionary, which is this SQSQ message here into a JSON event and simply passing it through to our state machine. And then the account region and state machine name is coming from environment variables. Then we are executing our SQSQ source ARN to queue URL to get our queue URL. And then finally, we are going to be deleting the message from our queue because now at this point we have started our state machine successfully. So we can say, hey, we're finished processing our queue message and we don't want our message to go back to the queue, which could result in the same message being processed again. And there you go. We have successfully configured our Lambda function in order to start our state machine and delete the message. So we're just gonna go ahead and deploy that now. And once our function has been successfully updated, now just to make sure we've configured our environment variables correctly. If we go to configuration, I'm gonna to go to environment variables. And now you can see I pass in the account number, the region I'm in, and my state machine name that I wanna trigger. So try to make this code as dynamic as possible. So if you wanna reuse this for your own use case, you have some foundation to work with. Great, so let's go ahead and test out this workflow to make sure it's working. So we're gonna go and head over to our SQS queue to send a new payload to trigger our state machine. All right, so I'm in my SQS queue service and I'm gonna hit send and receive a message. So we're gonna say, hello from data eng, uncomplicated. And we can leave our delivery delay to two seconds and just go ahead and send our message. Great, so if we're successful, we should see a new message coming in our state machine if it's successfully triggered. All right, so I'm in my state machine start hello world, which is configured to my Lambda function now. And as you can see, this is the current time, 546. I've just got another message coming through. And just to show you what it looks like here, we can now see that our input is gonna be the payload that I've showed you from our SQS queue. You can see the actual message that I passed, hello from data eng uncomplicated, is being passed to the body. So in your use case, maybe there's some other analysis or something you need to do with the message from the payload. Um, so now it's being passed, which is great. And you can see that we've successfully invoked our Lambda 
And if we check out, you know, let's see what the result is from this, we can see that our payload was hello world. So there you go. We've successfully invoked our step function from a message being passed to our SQS queue. All right, so I hope this video was helpful on how to trigger a state machine when a message comes in an SQS queue. Thanks so much for watching, and if you thought this video was helpful, please hit that like button. And if you're new to my channel, please consider subscribing if you're interested in videos on working with data on AWS. Thanks again, and see you next time.